dangerous. Oh dear fucking god damn it. What's wrong? Oh. <laughs> you fucking sack of shit game. Not game, uh, OBS, why? <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, one of the things I love about the Twitch studio thing, like, it's more of a pain in the ass than Streamlabs to set anything up on it so I don't use it. But, it allows me to, on full screen games, like I can't downsize the window or whatever. I can have messages or in the stream viewer thing pop up. Oh, uh -huh. So yeah, so I can still see everything. But I can't see if people use channel points, which is why I still use my phone. <laughs> Yeah, as you can see, I made multiple save files. <laughs> there. Anyways, I believe we're on this one. And oh, I... yeah, even huh? even the Discord, I can see the message pop up. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know it went through Discord. Yeah, I can see the viewer count and... When I sent that bitch, it, it did show up. Nice. Ah, oh, yeah, Jeannie and Carrie's friendship quiz. Yeah, we had to go off of this in order to... Play a record, Forrest. No, uh, give me a moment, bitch. Anyways, uh, to basically save a whole group of people from the Whistling Man. Damn. And if you fuck up, Carrie dies. And only Carrie. <laughs> Who the fuck is Carrie? The per uh, uh, the one person that we're on call with to I save. Put a record on. Yeah. Well, I'm oh, put on okay. the flow. Oh. Well, okay. <laughs> Not so stupid hey, teens. That was the achievement for. Uh. I, I thought I, I received that, but I guess not. That's the achievement for saving them. Horace Nash here. Listeners, uh -huh. we got another caller live on one of the right? sixteen, the screen. Yeah, just need to turn the volume up a bit. All right. Hey Forrest, I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallus Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink, trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. Okay. I had a guy from Starling Security here earlier installing the Starling 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky, and I now consider you a friend, my man. Uh, no self-promotion, you talk a lot. Thanks, friend. <laughs> We're friends now, huh? Well... That's kind of you to say. Thanks. Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. Okay. Yeah. Back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was this one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time bottle oh i didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk it's just how it was that bottle took the best years of my life or so i thought it's never too late roller ricky how did you turn things around i joined a support group what is this got I from up scary to depressing sharing that burden <laughs> just took so much weight off Long story from there, but Wait, who is that in I the background? That's my co-host. Cutting loose and making okay. shapes. Now so it's you. I get down, I get down. Oh shit. <laughs> finally free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? Oh, oh. Doggo. Aw, oh, hello, Max. Oh. Welcome, Max. Yeah, welcome to the show, oh. Max. Oh. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro. Max can skate. <laughs> yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, 
and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. You're that does fair. not. Sounds like you does not sound fair. like a happy. Uh, owl. Maxie appreciates fair. all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating's got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a level. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. You got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next he, he didn't even request what song. I have multiple Max. songs. Oh, I said something funky. Well, I could be lazy. Just play this. Is that funky? I don't know. Uh, uh... Fuck it, we're playing it. No, we're not interested in songs. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but oh yeah, it was inspiring to hear somebody. Come there was back one person we could like save, that. but I'm kind of yeah, glad he got murdered. Because even though you we were, were taking phone calls Max saying stage, how well, the whistling uh, man's going out to that. kill people Another and saving lives, line. this what guy kept odds? calling, pretending it. to be the whistling man, and. And even scared one of his f friends almost to death. Jesus. We have a call waiting. Yeah, and the funny thing is, they they turn around. And it's like, who's this? Who's this person behind us? And it was listening man. He just goes over, stabs him, and tears off his face. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, he kind of deserved it. Point sixteen. <laughs> the scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. I made it home safe. Oh, scary! Hey, I I just wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though it was we lost Jimmy, and I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't. Why, why am I? Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? What he did. Why let me go? Yeah, that's at, actually at the end where we saved everyone. The killer got free from a bookshelf falling on on him and went through the floor. He came out, looked at Carrie in the eyes, and left. Mm. He wanted the pranksters, he got bored, he saw he was a victim. Now we're in the mind of a killer. So... I wouldn't say he got bored, because he's constantly going after people. Yeah. So it could be, he wanted the pranksters, which is possible, because they were, you know, pr pretending Man, to be shit. him. Yeah. Nah, I, I'd say the middle. Yeah. Maybe he only wanted to hurt the pranksters. I... Maybe. Did he just think everyone was making fun of him? Did he always hate these hazing rituals? I, I mean... Probably. If he did, why wait all these years to... Why do this now? These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, Forrest, uh, could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Pro Center. And... Oh, right here. Thank you. This next <laughs> one goes out to Carrie. That's... That's the one thing. What type of hazing you know, ritual would have you pretend really to be a thinking? killer? About what? The whistling man left her alone. Mm -hmm. Why? There must be a reason. When it comes to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of their process. Well, it's something True. to consider. 
I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. Well, I'm fine with it now. Let's get going, Peggy. Alrighty, we could run another segment or... Scratch that, Forrest. We have a caller. Oh. You're through to 189.16, The Scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, that call with the teens was awful. Those poor kids. Still, I'm, I'm glad the girls didn't get hurt. Thanks for your concern. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. You said you were gonna play it, but you didn't. Your name was Dawn, right? My Peggy. Yes. Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn, and I wanted oh. to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. Long Ride Home? You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? Yeah, uh, the producer, the main person of this, who owns this company right here, kept playing the song non-stop even though Peggy hated the song so at one day she just uh, threw it out the window <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say uh, we got maybe another song you must love it but we don't have it and the thing is I'm pretty sure if I go outside I'm gonna get killed cause I'm pretty sure the killers by now have started listening to the radio to what we're doing. Yeah, well, that doesn't mean he's outside the station. Well, he actually placed the tape using our voices saying everyone in this uh, city is going to pay. So he knows oh. where we are. <laughs> well, I, I guess just say, but we don't have it. Yeah. But we don't have that song. As you just said, Peggy threw it out the window. <laughs> Forrest, you do have it. It's just outside the window. There's I'm very skeptical of Dawn. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Dawn, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That's miles from the station. It won't take a second to grab it. How do we know he's not going by car? <laughs> nah. He's fast. <laughs> he's fast. He's fast. Which actually does... Hold on. Old Murder House. I want to see if it's on here. I do not see it on here. <laughs> I think it was actually down towards Whistling Point down here. Yeah, the last time he went to kill someone, he burnt this place to the ground. Oh, Jesus. And, like, I think it, it went, like, 20 minutes went by, and he was down here. That would take he... a long time by foot. Yeah, so he's he's definitely got a car. Yeah, <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm not trusting that point. Because he could be outside in minutes, uh... We can say nope, he's fast, or try again tomorrow. Hmm. I know at this Maybe point. Try it. Oh, try Go again ahead. tomorrow. What were you gonna say? I said I know at this point these answers don't matter. It's just when the whistling man's around that your choices matter because one of one of these will save them, the other two will kill them. Uh. Yeah. So I know these don't matter at the moment. So we can probably just say this. Yeah. Like tomorrow when this is all over, Don, uh, and I'll gladly play it for you then. No, no, that won't do. Don't worry. I think I can bring you around. Forrest, Peggy, I'm, I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. What? I think I know who's going to be next. What? Are you serious? What? Play my song, Forrest, and you'll find out. Okay, now I'm more skeptical of Don. Well, folks. Here's some music for you while I think things over. I am extremely skeptical of Dawn now. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. 
Peggy, I mean, is she serious about... I don't know, Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? If she's telling the truth... Alright, why don't you go? I don't care! <laughs> you can be an asshole. Actually, two of these choices are an asshole. Listen out her Yeah. Yes. Say all right then. All right. I'll do it. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. Wait, wait. Our fire door has to be unlocked. Yeah. It. Uh. You know, I never thought about it, but yeah. Why we would you lock a fire door? Anyway, I'll hold the fort down while you're out. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16. The Scream. With me, Peggy. I'm pretty sure locking a fire door is illegal. Okay, so this is the stairs to go that's down. That's not opening. Oh, wait, no, that's not. That's the wrong door. <laughs> I... <laughs> These are the stairs. Wait, is that the fire door? Okay, I'm, I don't... Okay. Yeah, because this is where the tape was left. I don't see him. Yeah, but, uh, I'm still very skeptical of Dawn at the moment. There. Oh, God. You know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the Whistling Man. Out here. In the open. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> of course, it locks behind me. And of course, the key doesn't work on this side. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm not going to go over another there. way back in through the basement. A, a door, elevator, or something. Oh my god, I actually have to go back there. Oh, that's just fucking great. Plus, where the hell's the song? I could care less about that at the moment. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Long ride home. That way. I know there was like. Now, if it's talking about a basement thing, I know there's these two doors right here. But I don't think you can pick. Nope, you can't open them. You can't go that way. The fuck? Don't fucking do that. Save early, save often. Oh, true. Oh. Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses. Well, it doesn't say what type of fuse goes on there. So we obviously know the killer's here. Like, oh, I yeah. fucking called it. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's a good fuse. Wait a minute. That's a mouse trap. Hold on. I actually checked everything here earlier before. This was not here. Oh god. Mm -hmm. 
because I, I like to check everything. Oh, no. I don't want to be murdered. Got one more. It sucks I can only carry one item at a time. And I also can't run. This is as fast as I can go. I don't know if these are the correct ones I'm supposed to be grabbing or not. I'm not sure if it's like specific fuses, like the green ones. Yeah. So far, I only see one... Green one. Or green. Or if it even fucking matters. <laughs> I mean, it says... Wait... It says 70 here. So does that mean the numbers have to add up to 70? Maybe. Okay, so hold on. So if that's the case. And the red and yellow ones just say different numbers. If that's true. Is there no way to fucking sprint? Nope, this is as fast as I can go. <gasps> yeah, this is A20. And this is A15. I think I have to add it up to 70. Mm. So there's. What's the red one? Because I know I saw a red one earlier. I thought there was a red one on that table. Yeah, there it is. Oh, there it is. A30. Okay, so there's a five on there already. So that means... Oh, two fives on it, which means it's ten. And was there... Uh, what's the green one you had over there? A five. Hold on, I think I got... I got it. Okay, so if I put a 15 on there, that would make it a 20. And I another 20, that's 40. Then the last one would be 30. That would be 70. Yeah. Big brain moments. <laughs> that off. So now it's at 20. You need to bring a 20, then the 30, and then boom. That's only if the 70 thing is correct. <laughs> I mean, I'd imagine it is. True. I hate that I can only bring one item at a time. Yeah, that's... Like, everything else about the game looks great. It's just the one item at a time. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that you can't fucking move faster. Yeah. It's like, if I was in this situation, I'd be fucking, at the very least, sprint walking. <clears throat> Especially after actually seeing the whistling man. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> or at least who we assume to be the Whistling Man. Well, actually, that's a funny thing. Like, we learned earlier about the Whistling Man that he did die years ago. Uh, so, are you gonna pull the lever? Bingo! I was correct! Fuck yeah! Didn't even shut the thing. I could probably survive that fall. Well, you did. Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clive. Oh. Uh... Uh... What? These were... These were the people that were almost murdered. 
Flive what is the, the whistling hell? man. Peggy is not gonna believe this. Why are you yelling at me, Festus? Hmm. I wonder how the show's going. I swear, if Peggy's God, going. Please let this be the last locked door. Okay, so we have a problem. I can't go anywhere. Because both doors are locked. I guess look around for a key. Yeah, so... The funny thing is, I think they said, like, the person's... The killer's name was Clive, or, or what the janitor's name was. And yeah. So, is, there were other suspects named Clive, but uh, I think we know by now who it is. <laughs> ah, there's yeah. the beautiful key. Should be able to get back to the studio now. Which I mean also would mean as to how and why they're able to easily come here. Yes. Yeah. Now I bet Peggy's missing. And that's oh. such a good song, folks. And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive the janitor might be Clive the murderer. What? Start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door lock. Oh, yeah. 240. All right, so 4 o'clock in a.m. would be where the cops... thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run oh. through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement, made by our creepy janitor, who you think is the creepy whistling man. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, uh -huh. Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's, Clive's, next target? That's right. And we've got to find him. You said there are four locations listed there, too? The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're going to have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Oh, Hit that's the great. the button if you need any help. Okay. Oh, we got everything that was on the board. Oh, that's actually a lot helpful. We don't have anything for Rebecca Allen. That's fucking great. Alright, for Chuck Brody, we have... Yes. Festival of the of Disaster. Big Wheel Breaks Free. 15 Injured. Who is to blame? Girls Creek Harvest Festival closed early this year. After tragedy struck only hours after opening. The big wheel broke free and its support from its supports and rolled through town. Investigation is kind of underway. More on page two. Well, that's great. Uh, call for donations to help Chuck Brody. Former Gallows High School football captain Chuck Brody suffered a career ending injury as a victim of the festival disaster late last year. To help him on his road to recovery, we are buying him some lottery tickets. Hopefully, he gets lucky and get back on his feet. Pun not intended. Drop tickets in the bucket below. Thanks. Okay. So, Chuck Brody is most likely at the hospital. Because of the, the leg injury. You. So, we got you is there 
Oh wait, maybe not. Oh fuck. Flu for thought. Local Dr. Kim Walker recommends all locals get their flu shop ASAP. Flu season is upon us. 1984 is no different from any other year. Make sure you're, you are protected. God damn it. There's two people that could be at the goddamn hospital. Is there anything over here? Oh wait. Oh wait, hold on. Marriage announcement. We'd like to celebrate the marriage of Kim Walker and Peter Stein on 30th of May, 1970. Best wishes to have a couple. Congratulations. Is there anything else about Kim Walker? Crime syndicate impounded. Criminal operation shut down. 24 arrests. Inside an informant walks free. Police have today finally put an end to a long-running car thieving crime syndicate. The arrests were made after a member gave up information. On our co conspirators to investigators, the informant who asked to remain anonymous <laughs> and will hereafter be referred to as RA has walked free with no charges. RA. That would be Rebecca Allen. Co conspirator. Not co conspirator. Shut up. Justice for Festival Victims, the two-year investigation of the festival incident has concluded. Investigators blame two engineers that were contracted in from the local power station. Lead engineer Ant Williams and junior engineer Sean Everett. Wait, Ant Williams, wasn't that one of them? Aha! That's a good idea where they could be. Power station. Should read everything, though. Uh, Sean Everett is distracted talking about horror movies while assembling the big wheel which led to various construction mistakes there they have been ordered to do community service for a total of redacted <laughs> this title for this newspaper beep beep look out tragedy <laughs> five dead 16 injured after brakes fail on bus why would you start it off as what? beep beep <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> like, this isn't even, like, a Titanic situation where people were, like, satirizing White Star Line's marketing ploys. It's it's literally just, oh, how, how should we talk about this tragic event where a whole bunch of people died on a bus? Let's just add beep beep. Yeah. All right. Uh oh. Tragedy struck Gallows Creek yesterday afternoon after a bus failed to stop and crashed into a fuel tanker. The deceased have been identified as Gallows Creek's locals, Dr. R. D. Rude, Mr. M. Hewton, Mr. P. Stein, Ms. K. Stein, and Ms. Mildred. Police have asked for privacy for the families of the victims and incident not being treated as suspicious. That doesn't tie it to anyone. Gallows, Gallows Creek game day. Well, that's talking about the guy who had his leg fucked up, but that's not gonna. Yeah. No. Trailer for cheap. Sale price $10,000. Lot 101, 63 McCready Street, Gallows Creek. Contact estate agent Tyra Wallace for more info. I'm sick of being a local celebrity. People are so mean to me. I only stole a few cars. <laughs> Who cares? Buy a new one. I'm selling my trailer and leaving town ASAP. I just want to get out of here. Please buy it. What the fuck? <laughs> I just stole your car. The means you go from work and shit. <laughs> it's not that big a deal. <laughs> Just buy a new one. Boot Pick yourself up by your bootstraps and go get a new one. It's not my yeah. fault you're poor. <laughs> huh. Alright. 1987 Quiet Ridge Health and Safety Convention. Tuesday 1st, Sunday 16th September. Do you care about health and safety? Good. Then come down to the yearly convention. Get started in a career in health and safety advising. Learn about the health and safety workplace, featuring special guests. Uh, the lead... Hold on. 
That's much better. The lead engineer responsible for the Gauss Creek Harvest Festival disaster in 1972. They say you learn from your mistakes while I turn mine into a career. <laughs> you killed people because of your mistake. <laughs> By the way, uh, save early, save often. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is your car safe? Sheriff Matthews warns citizens to look out for suspicious behavior after multiple car thefts. This the crime wave of, of 70 will be will be stopped. I can assure you, we must work together to bring this criminal organization. Oh wait, 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 wait. Trailer park for Rebecca Allen, because if we go back here to the crime syndicate, R A, like she went around trying. This with the crime syndicate, and it's saying that there's a crime organization stealing cars, and there's this one person just being a local celebrity for bring, help bring down this that would tie in for Rebecca Allen. Mm. Okay, so we got hospital or gas station for Chuck Brody or Kim Walker because I'm pretty sure Aunt Williams is at the power station somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 24 hour gas station brought by local ex lottery winner Christine's gas and repair has been sold to a man who won lottery 14 years ago the new owner claims it will keep me busy on the evening he has asked to remain anonymous well I know who that is because <clears throat> right here it literally says buy them a bunch of lottery tickets it's Chuck Brody <laughs> Yeah. Which means the last one remaining. Boom. Wow, I actually handled that puzzle a lot better than I thought I would. I'll still read everything, though. Yeah. Local Legend talks to Manhattan. Infamous author of Tell All Book, Diary of a Car Thief. Moves out of Gals Creek for a new life in Big City. She stole our cars and then she stole our time and money, said our reviewer Jim Randy last year. <laughs> uh, I will be right back. Okay. 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 I believe I got everything correct. Can I actually pick this up? I can. Okay. Wait, no, I can't. Oh, I can't leave it. God damn it. Oh well. How's it going? I'm ready. I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. Let's do this. I'm sure. Let's do this. I think this. I got this. I think okay. I got this correct. Name first. Who do you think the target is? Oh, fuck. Okay, so Chuck Brody is at the gas station. Search for a station of the president. So, how it's well in the citizens of Gals for time. Uh, Aunt Williams, maybe. Aunt Williams. And where will I find them? Of course, I put that down there. Power station. The power station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Forrest, I'm through to the power plant, but... They say there isn't anyone by that name there. Fuck! What? Then who? Ah! Jesus! It sounds like something blew up! 
He's using bombs now? Oh my god. The call board. It. I. One moment. Forrest, I'm getting so many calls. Uh, just let me. Uh, I'm gonna take us off air for a moment. <sighs> Peggy, what's happening in there? Peggy. I'm back. He blew up the gas station forest. Okay. I spoke to the fire department and. Okay, so I know which one it is the now. The fire. Oh yeah, it would be Chuck Brody because he can't run away. It would be Chuck Brody. Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? The gas, the gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Hello? Chuck Brody! Listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the Whistling Man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. The Whistling Man? Who the hell are you? Who is this? This is Forrest Nash. Listen, the Whistling Man's back. We found a list with your name on it, and... Oh, God. It's, it's today. Steve, I finally let myself forget. I... Okay, save game. What, today? It's today. What, what, what happened today? Today... I... I think he ran off. Well, fingers crossed that Chuck... Ah! Jesus! It sounds like something blew up! He's using bombs now? I... I... Is Chuck? I don't know. Hang on, we're getting a call. Hello? Supposed to Chuck? escape. Chuck! Of course! And the whole goddamn gas station's gone up! Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. The town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Yeah. Damn it, that fireball threw me. I've got to get to the hospital. I'm not feeling great. Forrest, man. I can't thank you enough, but... Yeah. I gotta go. Wait, I... Damn it. I lost it. Oh, Forrest, the call board is lighting up. Get us into some music while I deal with this. Sure. Here's some music while we regroup here on KFAM 189.16, The Stream. All right. I'm going to be right back, Danger Noodles. <laughs>
And I am back. All right. So that means we now go to resume. I think I'm gonna double check, make sure it's actually showing up. Oh. Hi, Hatchet. So we got the places correct mm. but we didn't figure out who would be the first target oh yeah and i feel stupid because it makes sense who the first target actually was i just chose the guy who was at the power station aunt williams i just chose random because i didn't know who yeah it was the it was chuck brody at the gas station it makes sense because of his leg in injury. He wouldn't be able to escape in time. If we didn't give them warning. Gotcha. Yeah. I feel stupid. So I'll take it someone him. died. Yeah. So he... I'll take it yeah. someone died and then you restarted or? Yeah. Uh, the whistling man blew up the gas station. <laughs> he was very well dead. <laughs> That's a little excessive, but okay, whistly boy. Yeah. Whatever floats your boat, whistly man. Right. Huh. Yeah, but it does make so much sense. There's that gotta be the more fucker. in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest... We need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe mm. start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. Great, I have to go in the murderer basement. My favorite activity is murderer basement. Right. <laughs> I wonder how much of this sound is coming through my mic. Not much. Mike barely knows anything. That's good. I'm changing my trash bag. Oh, then I barely hear anything at all. <laughs> I just hear you. <laughs> oh, that's good. Watch. The second I open this, majority of this shit's gonna be gone. Oh. Hmm. A key? Was oh. this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. Well, that's just not con that's definitely not concerning. I fucking knew it. They were listening. Right. Peggy, give me some warning before yelling down the intercom. Sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. <laughs> a map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. Okay. Follow the maps. Find the tapes. I'll be waiting. Wait. George Barrow? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. That is, that is not a map. That's, that's a fucking photograph. Look, white people aren't always intelligent in horror movies and games. That's, oh wait, hold on. 
Would it be that right there, or... Well, I don't think we can go around anywhere near, and I'm not trusting that. Oh, well, that's not concerning. This is fine. I should probably save. <laughs> I'm on edge right now. Oh, wait, access codes. Okay, so these are maybe important. My phone camera is shit. Yeah. yeah, my phone's camera is shit. I can't tell what the fuck is going on in the picture. It's because my fucking phone case is bad. Uh, so we got this. Delivery note. This is probably going to be important. But this also could be fucking important. Probably look for maps. Because the guy said look for the fucking maps. Or, well, pictures, to say the least. Oh. I shouldn't play that one just yet. Oh. I'm not sure if there's going to be more pictures, and I, if I hit the wrong one, I die. Okay, I think it's just in order. I think that's all that it is. Just in order. I think this will be next. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. Oh. Oh, that's not concerning. <laughs> Is there anything in there? No. Additionally, there appears to be a post mortem injury to the arm. It looks like it was trapped in a car door. I don't know what the fuck this shit is, but I can't mess with it. Can't mess with that, where the hell that is. Enough 
Oh, shit. What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. Also, while listening to that, I couldn't stop staring at the Humpty Dumpty, because that has Nicolas Cage's face on it. Wait, it does? Look at it. That looks literally like Nicolas Cage. Uh, I don't see it. It looks like Nicolas Cage to me, but in a way, the face is disturbing on the fucking egg. <laughs> Wait, Humpty Dumpty, a story of love, tragedy, and betrayal. Yeah. Okay, so we had two suspects. One was Clyde the janitor. That's gone out. And the one suspect, I believe, which is Dawn. She wanted me to go outside in danger. Oh. You missed this one. Oh, yeah, and she said that she knew the... Huh? And she said that she knew who would be the next victim's stuff. True, yeah. That... She's a big vic uh, suspect. Sorry, I made you do this, this Virginia. Before. They were hiding something. Yeah, I'm gonna take this because that weird sound, the da da ding sound, that only goes mm -hmm. for key items. So this is actually an important item. Oh, yeah. So, it's, so that other two things that I thought were important back there, they didn't do that sound, so I guess they're not really that important. More to do. There's still more to do here before I can leave. Okay, so that means we missed some tapes. So I'm gonna open this. What is that? That was the first time I ever saw that, that there's still more stuff to do here. Neat. Yeah. Oh yeah, how long were you planning to stream tonight? I can probably go up till midnight. Okay. And then, also, another thing I would love to have is a fucking flashlight. Is there a tape we missed? Oh. You can't open that. Oh, well, now I can open it. <laughs> we, we played this, right? Yeah, we played that one. I missed not any of that. There was that thing about access codes, wasn't there? True. I didn't do that special sound that I mentioned earlier. So maybe I actually have to go back and pick it up. Then that means I also have to drop this. Oh, wait. The, the game never told me I can do this. <laughs> I hate this. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I can switch between the shit. But I can oh so I can only pick up two. What's that poking out of the drawer? Absolutely nothing I can pick up. Uh.
for your art. We could just look through everything in here. And you can't get through those, or get into those cabinets? Yeah, no, I can't. Something here. Can I already check the nose too? There's nothing in there. I'm confused. I checked everything. There's still more to do here before I leave. What? What is there to fucking do? I've literally checked every fucking tape. To this. Okay, hold on. I'm getting into light. So right here, over here, there should be important papers. Aha! This looks useful. All right, there we go. Now I probably actually got the important papers. I can only hold two items. What else do I fucking need? Well, there was more in that desk. True. I put that back here. And did you play that recorder? Yeah, I already played these. Okay, so... Gotta find that. Something in a trap door on the ground. Yes. At least that's what it looks like. Or I was supposed to say, like, a tape. Yeah. Because there's that. That was the next one we see. No, we actually probably did miss a tape. Aha! Yeah. So we did miss a tape. Here we go. Yeah. Busty, you're not going downstairs. Cortisol. Okay. So the next one will be right there. Which we already know where that is. is right, right in here. But there's no picture for the next one. Which means I guess we go through here. Here. Got the picture for the final one right there. And then, boom. And there was no picture for you either. Oh, ooh. hidden a record. Vinyl for my collection. Busta. I'm not sure if you heard him, but he tried fucking opening the door. <laughs> the He's fucking... learning. But the thing is, it's a, it's a round doorknob, so he can't even open the door. I didn't stop my cat, Indy. There. But I don't think bus is good enough to do that. Okay, so where's that other paper that I placed that? I'm pretty sure that's important. Ah, there it is. Alright. Now, for a little fuck, that should be everything. What? I. What? Fuck it. We're gonna place everything there. What else do I have to do? It's starting to get infuriating. Because there's one area 
Well, not this one area. It was over here. This fucking area doesn't have a picture to go with it. Oh, wait. There it is. Well, yeah, we already are aware of this thing. Which is just right here. We grab both, uh, grab the shit from here. And we go here. And then did you the go to where that picture was? Oh. Hi, Buck. Oh, what did Buck do? Play the, the, the fish genius. announcer. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Buck. So what was that hatch? I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> did you go to where that picture Showed on, like there was a there was a picture already on that little table. Yeah, that's this. It's right there. Mm. So we've been everywhere. I'm so fucking confused. Oh, hold on. Fire red oh, emblem Jesus Christ, fuck. To view Holy fucking shit. Uh, thank, uh, thank you. Thank you, Bookworm. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Very good. <laughs> now we get the new emotes. Yeah. Is everything alright? Yeah, it that just means a whole lot after everything that's been going on. Ah. It, it means a lot, look. Thank you. Oh, it's not good. It what is. is that, fucking 50 bucks? You just dropped on that all at once? Probably. Well, it depends on which type of tier. It's tier one. Oh, it's 200. And yeah, probably 50 bucks. <laughs> I can get a broom. Sweet, 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 sweet. Based bookworm. Yeah, now I'm very confused because there's obviously something we're missing. There's nothing in there, there's nothing that's lighting up. Mm. Have you seen anywhere that like, those access codes could, like, be put into? I don't think so. <clears throat> so, yeah, I haven't seen anything like that. Oh, for it's fuck's sake. Autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I don't think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Oh. You think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, oh, and it was a purple just got thing. Here Dawn. I don't know found another tape that talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life, sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. Cover up. An autopsy report. What does it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. 
I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with a report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Wait, the caller from earlier, when we had to call the takeout restaurant, wasn't her name Virginia? We need to call her back once we finish down here. It, it looks like she might know something about what's going on. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. <laughs> <laughs> the written report I found doesn't mention it at all. How did his arm get trapped in a car door after he died? Unless he got it when the police collected his body. <laughs> I guess someone else must have moved it after he was dead to where he was eventually found. But the report, what is going on here? I found a police report. Mentions a friend from earlier, Sandra Sharp. Sandra. The jazz runner? That's right. She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? Yeah. What's strange about that? George got cuts from running through foliage, right? But there's no forest around there. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? Reservoirs don't have ties. But that's what the police report said. It's not possible, though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. But, yeah, not important right now. <laughs> the important thing is that it doesn't make sense. What are you oh. suggesting? That the body was originally found somewhere other than what the report suggests. That the sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Something like that. Well, Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. True. But Sandra is still alive. Once we're done down here, we should give her a call. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit, where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. So she agrees with us. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I, I think it was Clyde. This is starting to make sense now. This, this is a conspiracy to cover up what happened to George. I, uh, I, think, I, <laughs> <last recording. laughs> I think Clyde might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for any killings, but... For playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You... Do you think the whistling man already got him? Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but... Maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know. It's but fair. Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident and the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Ugh, why didn't he just come out with all of this? He said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you killed all those people. Do you think you found everything? <sighs> I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. And beyond the grave. So that's what we had to do the Thank entire God time. You're back, Forrest. But before we running... continue, I'm gonna put Buster back on the bed. Oh, hey. Let's come in. You're not going downstairs. You little shit messing up my bed. Me, you 
What is going on? Nothing. Please go the fuck to sleep. Oh my gosh, shut the fuck up, Patch it. FBI, open up! Stop going with your soundboard. Potatoes! Let me know when you're done with the soundboard so we can continue. I'll never be done with the soundboard. What the dog doing? <laughs> oh my god. I'm guessing you actually heard me Emotional talking about stuff. Damage. Yeah. Okay, fine. This this is the last one. Raised dogs with one bird. <laughs> my god. Out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm <sighs> stressed. I oh mean, my god. Really? How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? It's our, it's our job beats me. <laughs> I can literally say it's our job. It's our job to solve murders. That's what this radio station is all about. I can show you my cure is most effective. This is our job, Peggy. <laughs> SCP-049 was right. the whistling man. Confirmed. So, what's the plan now? Man. I think we should call Virginia back. All right. I'll get her on the line. Okay, Forrest. Shut the music off. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Oh my gosh, Hatchet. Oh yeah, I, f I forgot. It's, uh, the we sent a bunch of drunk college frat people to save Virginia from the Whistling oh, Man. Oh, for fuck's sake. We, we, it was the only way to save her, so yeah, we're gonna deal with that. <laughs> no, it's Forrest. Slunker, hey, it's the Radio Man. Forrest Nash. Radio Man? What's up? Solving mysteries, saving lives. The huge. Right, 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 right on. Flunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? Sh she asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling turd. So we're hanging out, bro. <laughs> oh my God. Well, that's, uh, that's big of you, Flunker. No, oh, <laughs> it's nothing. Can I speak to Virginia? Sure thing, radio man. I'll just go get her. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm oh my god. Glad you're still okay. Oh, Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumping. Don't be sorry. I'd be jumping to a jumpy too. We need to talk. <laughs> I can't blame you. I'd be jumpy too. I'm yeah. so sorry this happened to you, Virginia. I thought I was. I thought... Easy. We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? We should probably bring out Clive. Yeah, probably. Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No. I don't know that name. What are you asking about?
about this for? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified, Forrest. Clive's the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. We have evidence why so certain we thought so too. Probably we saw, thought so too. Yeah. We thought so too, but... You don't understand. All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... All right. One day, I came into work to find a... a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in. And he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but, well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. Oof. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said. And that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. Jesus. I don't know why he had me do it, but hey. my sister needed me. You have to understand, she needed me. We understand. Speak for yourself, Peggy. It's okay. He just right. Oh, <laughs> it's just he's just like speak for yourself, Peggy. I blame her entirely. You could have just threatened to take the sister off her meds. <laughs> Look. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God. I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? Well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Mm -hmm. Do you want to call her? I do. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah, we need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. I'll okay. All right. Call. This is where we need to save because I feel like we can fuck up. Calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. If we studio. push too hard, we're not going to get the information we need. Hmm. If Aha, we push too hard. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra. It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. <laughs> and you're live on air. I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How's Jazzy? What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. Why, Forrest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say 
you have to just bet anything you have. Anything you say. Why were you targeted? Be serious. That sounds nice. Okay, we don't want to push her. So be serious is not the correct answer. <laughs> Bonk catch. <laughs> so why are you tar? Why were you targeted? And that sounds nice. I come to think of it, I need to figure out how to do like the things with the anomalies. Aren't those like channel alerts? Well, channel points. Yeah. Like, is is that something that you only get once you are verified? I don't remember. Yeah, because I've seen like alerts that I can do, but I have no idea. Uh, those, are... Says, those are affiliates, yeah. Oh, okay. So I can't do those yet. Damn. So the only choices we have right now that we can choose is that sounds nice, and why were you targeted? I'm iffy about the top one. Because we don't want to push her. Uh, and, like, that sounds nice thanks to my dumbass brain framing things weird just makes it sound like harassment oh my god I think I'm gonna go for the bottom one because the top yeah. two really well that sounds nice I might just call you back tomorrow then too forest oh, got my number <laughs> but what about tonight is there anything you want to talk about right now Remember why we called, Forrest. Oh, of course. <laughs> Do you know why the Whistling Man might have targeted you? Ha! As far as I can tell. He's just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. You found the body, are you keeping secrets? Don't play games. That's a bad choice at the bottom. Yeah. That's pushing it. So it's just the middle and top. I, I would say the top. Like, we need to push, but not too hard. Right. Sandra, we know you found George's body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. It's okay. Don't be a liar. Okay, now that's gonna push too far. <laughs> yeah, so it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, Sandra. We know. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. <sighs> this studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. You understand? Sure, get on with it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, no, Forrest. <laughs> sure, I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet, and everything would be okay. Oh, I think I know what's going on. Because mm. one person that's trying to run for mayor owns half the properties in the town, like Tom Jr. I think his name is. I think um, he's the one who's threatening. He's trying to cover up something. Interesting. So it should probably say something that helps sympathize with her. So maybe that's low. Yeah. Yeah, that's low. All right. You covered up the murder of a boy for a dance studio. Wrong choice, Hatch. Oh shit! Oh shit! That's not low, Sandra. Hatchet. <laughs> well, I was thinking that that's like being directed at the people who's blackmailing her. How was I supposed to guess that that would be him just like fucking snapping at her? Hopefully, she's at her jazz studio. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. That's Hello. low! Sandra at Jazz Jazz Jazz, jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra. It's we at least know the choices to choose to that point. <laughs> and you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. Now we have to listen to everything again. <laughs> uh, well, 
We're I'm fine with that. I do like her voice. The attacks tonight. True. We had a few questions. By forest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. That sounds nice. Really? Well, that sounds nice. I might just call you back tomorrow then, too. Ah, you got my number. But what about tonight? Is there anything you want to talk about right now? Remember why we called, Forrest. Of course. Do you know why the Whistling Man might have targeted you? Ha! Far as I can tell. He's just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. And we did top one, remember? I, I think I remember doing... Yeah. That that one didn't freak her out too much. So Sandra, it's... we know you found George's yeah. body. We have the police report. I... I don't know what you mean. It's okay. It's okay, Sandra. We know. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. <sighs> this studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. You wonder understand? if the guy who's running for mayor before I choose his choice, I wonder if he was the one who got that kid killed. Yeah, and specifically, oh yeah, and like notice immediately she basically lets slip that uh, the suspicion being true that he wasn't originally in the reservoir. She yeah. found him in the river. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure, sure. I understand. When the rain yeah. just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet, and everything would be okay. Of course. Who was he? That that's low. Low. <laughs> We know that was the wrong answer. Okay, so maybe just say, who was he? Yeah, who was he? Sandra? Who was he? He was... Reservoir instead of the river. He. He. Uh, I'm sorry. I can't do this. And she's oh, gone. Fuck. I don't think that could have gone any better. You truly did great for us. Oh. Well, folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Maybe that was the correct choice, Hatchet. Yes, maybe. Welcome to one eighty nine point sixteen, the stream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Forrest. Oh God I damn it! It's really out of the blue with everything happening tonight. But I wondered if you could send a special birthday message to my uncle. Uh. <laughs> I have a feeling who this fucker is. Sure, why Who are you not? thinking? It's the guy from his Pete's Pizza place that keeps like Thanks calling to like come in his here. First name's Peter, but he never oh. liked his name. Yeah. But since he always I wanted to do like free advertising and shit. Even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday? You would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my God, damn it! Yes, tell him he can get the best burger. God damn it, I knew it. Funny package is here at Pony's Pizza. Starting a just you son of a bitch, stop calling us. Sorry, Forrest. <laughs> Let's just move on. We've already got another caller on the line. <laughs> Fucking Ponty, you son of a bitch. This is one eighty-nine point sixteen, the scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> caller. The fuck? <sighs> Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man. I'm going to murder you, Ponty. Forest? Forest? Are you okay?
okay? Just give me one moment. I'm gonna go murder him. I hope the whistling man gets him with his own pizza slicer. Jesus Christ. <gasps> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> that was that was too much. It's okay. It's been a high stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I swear I if he fucking calls again. Now. We've got another call. <laughs> whenever you're ready. Guy just needs to block this number. <laughs> Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's <laughs> all I'm going to say about that. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16 The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Don? We played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? I uh, never mind that now. I'm calling because I need your help. Oh no. We had a deal. Are you in danger? Bottom one. Yeah. Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean. Yes. He's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Helping? <laughs> you do exactly help. You almost got me killed. I, I guess just say right. 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 Okay. Tell us everything. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next, after Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. So I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. Oh, god damn it. Ask a neighbor, go elsewhere. Use a key. I'd say ask a neighbor, maybe. Can a neighbor let you in? Oh, I only moved in last week. I don't know anybody yet. There's not even a buzzer here, only the, the keypad for the entry code. Oh my god, we actually needed that. Inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the New Woodside apartment. I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really carries at night. <laughs> Shit. Wait a minute. Remember there was that one person who yeah, uh, had a dog. dog. Fuck. It was the... I forgot his name. But he was like... Some... Uh... It was like, it's sort of an R because it matches a roller or something. Fuck. Yeah, something like that. A neighbor's dog? Is that a neighbor's dog? Yes, it is. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing and. Oh. Jesus! And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any. He's coming down the street. Uh, okay. This is the part where if we choose the wrong thing, she's going to die. Yeah, try neighbor's name. Neighbor's name? What's your neighbor's name? I don't know my neighbors, remember? Please, I need to get in. Oh, never mind. Security oh. system's name. Probably next. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. Not a Starling Hunt. Uh, we'll. Line that just Starling Hunt, we'll try. <laughs> we'll try what? <laughs> Well, there was that access code thing earlier. Yeah, I didn't bring it up with me. Oh, wait, I couldn't bring it up with it because, because it did the transition thing. Right, yeah. And it's not on the wall? No. 
uh, he over here anyways. A zombie stomp. Uh, we'll try. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Thank you, Forrest. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. Okay. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy. While I try to break Dawn into her apartment. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me, or was there something... Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah. Well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000, or whatever, here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure who. But to help someone. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. We already know where it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we got... I still think Dawn's a little suspicious, because they just mentioned Dawn was being a little suspicious. I mean, yeah. So, we got two maybe, suspects, huh? Maybe their questioning of, like, saying that that was odd, that could have been referring to the fact that we heard the pooch. Starling 4000, user manual. Okay. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Yeah. So we still do have a major suspect, which is the the mayor candidate. Like, yeah. literally trying to cover up something. <laughs> it changes codes immediately to prevent unwanted entry. Well, literally, there's one code on here, which is called the entry code, which is 715914. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. We should definitely not do when the, the alarm test off. warning. This will set off all security measures. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Or, I mean, we could do it just to hear her die. <laughs> God. Time to turn the music off. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16. You know what? Let's fuck it. Let's just hear what happens. The scream. Oh, thank God. All right, so that would be the give, give the alarm test activation code. The code is one nine one five one nine. Thank you, Forrest. Wait, that actually might have been the yeah, correct she... answer. Yeah, she was actually lying. Yeah, stay out! Nobody disrespect <laughs> the sanctity of the ring! Don't ever come back here again! Oh, I'm calling the cops! Thank God. Hello? Is someone there? Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. That was the whistling man. The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. To... I don't like hurting folks, but I can't let anything happen to Max. He, he's my best friend, you know? I... Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. Gonna barricade that window. My man, thank you. 
You and Peggy can skate for free, whenever you want, forever. That's a done deal. I... Thanks, wow. Ricky. Can't wait. Got it. We Talk just... to you soon. We just okay. fucking stumbled into the correct answer. I had a right moment. <laughs> yeah, we were just gonna see your dog die, but no. It's about time I have a bright moment. <laughs> Holy shit. So, the whistling man is a woman? Well, there's also voice changers. Well, we are, actually, we don't know what time set this is in, so we don't know if voice changers are this a is... thing. This is pretty clearly, like, in the 80s. So All the more recent stuff are talking about it being in the 80s. So I'm assuming voice changers are probably not a thing. <laughs> yeah, and, like, think about it. This is a relatively successful radio station that yeah. has an 80s vibe and uh, punch codes. Like, punch code security systems are only just now being implemented. Yeah. Which is like late 80s, early 90s stuff. <laughs> Bookworm says Order of Whistling Man has an incredible vocal range. True. Wait. I wonder. I wonder about something. I wonder if Dawn could possibly be the mother of the kid that got killed, and that's why she's angry and going after people. Maybe. Because that does make kind of sense, because... I, I would say the second answer, I had my suspicions, because she was being suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> I had my suspicions. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. Fuck you, Peggy! She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. Is she sick? I thought she was just regular Callous Creek Strange. <laughs> mm -hmm. went along. I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? Fuck you, Peggy. Why do you think she requested that song? The top answer is Get Me Outside. I literally yeah. saw her. To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, Press you're this. live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman, one who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. We're neighbors. Look out for each other, each other, and stay safe. I'm sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. <laughs> Festus. <laughs> Bookworm says trust no one. What about you, Hatchet? Is him mm. kill them all? I'm gonna save just in case something bad, like a bad choice. Uh... Trust no one. God damn it! To say, but it's time to trust no one. The killer was calling themselves Don. This could be a fake name. Do not trust anyone named called Dawn. I mean, it all, it could very well be a fake name. Because, like, everyone on here has been saying their first name. I mean, yeah, like, that's name. the thing. Both of these statements are objectively correct. Like, both of these statements could easily be correct. Yeah. This could be a fake name. I do not trust him. I'll call God. And also, I don't know. everyone calling the station has said their first and last name, too. But she's mm -hmm. only said her first name. True. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd say this could be a fake name. 
Yeah. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call in. <laughs> Bo you Book says the second number, one just right? to inspire it's fear. Yeah. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. This hey, is such an friend. interesting okay, setup folks, for a game. A call. It is, and I am really enjoying it. Like, this is actually pretty fun. It's just like murder mystery detective story, except you're just a fucking radio jockey having to piece <laughs> everything together. Yeah. You're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, man. Murphy? Damn straight. What's going on, Murphy? You in danger again? No, nah, man. I've just been listening to the show here at home. And since you asked folks to call in if they could help out, well, I'm calling. I don't know if I can say as much as other folks have, but uh, I figure I wouldn't be a good role model to Fernando if I didn't try to help, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember when I told you um, the waste disposal got burnt to the ground? Yeah. It was mainly because Murphy, who probably wasn't even one of the targets, literally outed out the the whistling man and said come and fight me bitch i'll beat you down jesus <laughs> yeah he basically was talking like that and the whistling man literally beat the shit out of him and threw him in a dumpster and, and set the place on fire <laughs> jesus yeah. book says and after this radio program true crime shows became incredibly popular <laughs> yeah this is the first, this is the OG true crime podcast we're watching. The Wesley Man is strong. Yeah, strong woman. <laughs> strong. You're a good father. Appreciated. What have you got? Probably the mm. last one, because we do need information. Yeah. Sounds good. What have you got? What do you want to know? Well, what can you tell us? Uh I don't know, really. Oh my right. god, Murphy. Well, do you know anything about the death of George Barrow? Absolutely nothing. Okay. God damn it, Murphy. What about the killer herself? Herself? <laughs> Man, I, I didn't get my ass kicked by a lady. Yes, you did. The man I went toe to toe with was a man, man. You heard the last call, right, Murphy? Yep. So you know it's a woman, and you were trained by a VHS, Murphy. I, I know, but... Man, how could it have been a woman under that mask? Let's just move on. Do you know anything about the history of the Whistling Man? Blind well, sexism. Yeah. The time I ever heard of him. What? I moved here three years ago, man. What do you want from me? All right. Here's the thing. Um, we're gonna continue with Murphy here. He got he for a scam where it says like if you buy these tapes we can teach you how to do how to do these amazing karate moves to protect yourself <laughs> yeah there's also there's one of the the karate moves it's called i think it was like the fighting spirit of the tuna <laughs> what okay yeah <laughs> i was oh, like wait what Book says why we could have more than one build, Murphy. Newsflash. Alright, no, nothing, no worries. A waste of time. A waste of time. No, we should uh, say no worries. Yeah. Hey, man, no worries. Just thank you for trying. Right. Sorry I couldn't help you all more, man. Now, if you'd have asked me about gators. Forrest, oh my we God. have a call coming in. Sorry, Murphy, I... I think that's all we've got time for right now. Uh, uh, all right, all right. I'll catch y'all with the gator talk later. Not. Well, folks, that was a bust. But perhaps our next caller has well, more folks, to tell us. That was a Let's bust. <laughs> Nakin's put on live just be smacking my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Using it like a fucking punching bag. Shot. Hit the button and take the call. This is Forrest Nash and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. Oh, God. I'm at 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. 
Okay, 25. None of these roads have numbers. This is a really trash city map. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What happened? Breathe. Is he still breathing? Okay, should probably stay right here. Because this is definitely another killer moment. <laughs> also, what kind of town is a perfect fucking square? True. This is Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, this is Minecraft. Like, I literally made, like, when I was younger, in, like, playing on the 360 version of Minecraft, I made, like, a medieval city that had a very similar city design to this. Oh, Book we got these also down love... here. Ah. Book says, also love how this game is demonstrating that this radio jockey is more competent than the cops. True. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Newberry. Wait, hold on. They're right here. Newberry Lane. Yeah. Wait, that's right near here. That ain't good. Oh no. What happened? Somebody's been stabbed. Can, can you tell me what happened? We've been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place, but we heard this whistling all of a sudden. Oh god. He started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. Oh no. Forest. Then what happened? Was it the whistling man? Was it a woman? Wait, what if no one was stabbed and the whistling man is trying to lure you out? True. Maybe. Can this be suspicious? Every caller? <laughs> Every caller, yeah. Was it the whistling man? Was it a woman? <laughs> was it a woman? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Casey, was his attacker the whistling man? Then Please, yes. We need help here. I'll get you help, but I need to know where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait. Why didn't she make sure he was dead? I don't know. I think I heard them say something like, "It's not so funny now, is it?" Before they left, but Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. Oh yeah, that's what happened. When he blew up the gas station, the ambulance was getting gas. <laughs> ambulance go boom. <laughs> What's your what is your friend's name? Where is he hurt? Yeah, go with the bottom one. Yeah. Can I feel like it's gonna be clips like ambulance go boom. <laughs> we just saying and that. What's your friend's name, Casey? Jason. Jason Parker. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. We have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh, God, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. I know, but please, we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen, you're going to have to get him here. We need to see him and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right. Listen, we need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. I'm really sorry about this, but I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. 
Oh, handle great. That. We don't have much choice. We don't really have much choice. Hit me. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Got it. I think. You said he was stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. It's stopping the no. force of the bleeding right now. Yeah. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle this. Glad you got it so far, because there's more to go. Yeah, before I say any, uh, keep going, um, there actually was, like, a forgot the fucker's name but in virginia there was a person who was a murder victim who got stagged uh, stabbed in the neck which is a fatal Dagged. area yeah yeah he actually survived because the knife he, oh. he, he pushed the murderer off because and the knife was still in the neck which clogged the bleeding and he got to the hospital in time and got surgery God, Jesus. Did he suffer any spinal damage of any kind? I think I think his voice box was fucked up from where his stab was. Oh. So he's probably mute. But yeah, that's that's one thing I did know is like if you have if if you've been stabbed with something and mm -hmm. the thing is still inside of you, you keep it there. Yeah. There... Anyway. Oh yeah, another thing with a stab thing. I've talked about me shooting my arrow on a foot before, but um, I actually yeah, uh, found like the old medical report from that time that they gave me. Apparently, not only was I a millimeter from hitting the bone, I was like less than ha a millimeter from hitting my tendons in my foot. Mm less that's, than a millimeter that is extremely lucky i don't know how it missed right doing a tutorial on how to take down titans <laughs> on on herself <laughs> and failed <laughs> yeah it's not not a very good idea to do it on yourself you can't heal like a titan yeah. Are you sure you can't can't stay? I can't keep up. Keep going. Obviously, the bottom one. Yeah, Ooh. keep going. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. The patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. How is Jason? Oh my gosh. I don't know why, but if, when I hear how is Jason, I, I'm thinking that Jason Voorhees was the one who got stabbed. <laughs> okay, okay, everybody. We gotta save Jason Voorhees so he doesn't turn into Jason Voorhees. <laughs> how is Jason Voorhees? How is Jason doing? Badly! He's still bleeding! I need help! I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? No. Take the knife out. Don't touch him. the knife. Take the knife out. Pull the knife out. Put it in his neck. That's where it needs to go. No, don't touch the knife. <laughs> God damn it. Pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. No, don't. 
Don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? <laughs> I hate looking at that knife. Y yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. You need to secure the knife. Leave the knife alone. Secure the knife. Well, if his stomach's bleeding more... True. We'd probably focus on the stomach first. All right. I, I think we need to leave that knife alone. All right. I'll just keep putting pressure on his stomach for now. Forrest, can I have a word? Okay. Casey, I'm going to have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> Jesus. You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. And you heard the nurse. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Wait, 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 wait. Kim Walker. Or was uh, it the person at the hospital? I'm not sure if that was the person we followed the hospital, though. That might have been. And she'll have to drive him. Well, can somebody nearby help, most likely? Yeah, either that or any Somebody suggestion. Somebody nearby help them? Yeah. Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped uh. it, didn't you? I, never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah? Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. I've only ever called Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of Peggy problems with that. Peggy X Karen. Really, book? Go on. It's sensitive information, so Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Oh, God damn it! Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not a clue. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. Oh, no. I'm not going to like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. Oh yeah, this God. is late 80s. Put them in a computer yeah. <laughs> and they can do something. <laughs> Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. Also, why does Peggy have, have the around. keys to everywhere? <laughs> because Peggy is best girl. Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. Fan She's theory. A... What if... Huh? Fan theory. What if Peggy is actually the whistle... The whistling man? She's been with me all night. Exactly. She has the perfect alibi, which means she can't be trusted. So where is everyone else in this situation? That makes a good question. Why is everyone else who works here 
Well, I know Clive is probably dead. But everyone else? Where's the receptionist? Where's the everyone else who's also part of this post thing? That's the that's janitor. Oh, this is probably his office. Because of that simple. Yep. Looks also, like I need seen a pay him person. Because she'd be calling remote peeing. You can see her through the window. Axe forever, need the right pitch document, good title, bring back original pro tag and villain. What? I don't understand what the fuck that meant. Uh, certificate to certify that Reginald Scott has successfully completed the standard course of first A to the in injured issue by St. Gabriel's Hospital, Gallows Creek. However, the window is tinted, so perhaps that's not actually her on the other side of the window. Oh yeah, look at that fucking computer. <laughs> Clive, if you're reading this, stop stealing my post-it notes. <laughs> well, I don't need to worry about that anymore. Ask Janine where the tapes are. It's been weeks now. Overdue. Wait, can I just take some? Uh oh. I was hoping I can take infinite sticky notes and just place them everywhere. Okay, we got one. Floppy disks. I thought it was really funny. Um, something that came up in a one topic video a while back was uh, um, like talking about how there's uh, oh my brain. Uh, there's a lot of these boomers that tend to uh, like make comedy out of the idea that. Gen Z is a failure of a generation because they uh um because they can't write checks because they can't write in cursive don't know how to seal an envelope stuff like that true and uh Could this uh be? oh OT brought up the fact that if if a kid has been playing video games they probably know a decent bit about older tech. Yeah. Because video games have been significantly better at educating Zoomers about old tech than anything else. Mm -hmm. I think like, the to the point... Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I, was saying, I think the first time I heard about floppy disks was from Fallout. Yeah. And it's like, even to the point that there... I think there's actually been some studies that came to the conclusion that on average, kids who play video games are more likely to be better at telling uh, analog time, like on old-fashioned clocks. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, we have to look for a time. It's a set very important date. Pizza delivery killer who kills with the pizza cutter. Free slice on me. Terrifying, there's net. There's never any pizza. What happened to the original delivery guy? Maybe write him in as as final girl's boyfriend. <laughs> Protagonist is college student Megan, surname to follow. She's smart, beautiful, resourceful, and lactose intolerant. <laughs> it provides the divide between her and the pizza killer. It takes place on November 7th, so it's probably 1107. Very important date for the town. Great goose gathering. <laughs> Event where a large number of geese appear suddenly and save the town from starvation. <laughs> Trying to link this into the greater story. <laughs> Need to kill off Megan's support network throughout the movie, like Axe 3, but even scarier. Maybe partner with Ponty's Pizza for the lunch. 110 orders just receive a pizza cutter and and tickets to the movie. I, th I think our boss was trying to make a movie. No.
Oh, that's great. Keep you Weaver sure Peggy. Sloppy. Okay, so... Oh, okay, so it's not going to be me or Peggy. We got John. Or Karen. It's not going to be these three. I did not mean to stand on this, but okay. <laughs> and maybe that's why the pizza guy keeps calling. He's mad your boss didn't follow through. So the three people who could help is Barbara Albright, John Hedges, and Bradley Carter. I'll check oh. that previous disc. Yeet! <laughs> your, your boss is gonna kill you for that one. Yeah. I don't care. What the fuck? Oh, you heard that too, nice. right? Yeah, obviously. But we're upright, job title receptionist, date of birth, October 7th, 1957. Address 14 Craven Street. Yeah. That's not where we need to be. Wait, wait, hold on. Let's actually see where Craven Street is. Let's see, how far are they? Well, look, you see, you say he's here, but right now... I'm pretty sure that woman. So oh, actually, just missed the killer. Raven Street's right here. Newberry Lane's where they're at. Hmm. That's actually not that. I far. guess that's a good. That's that's a good contender. Yeah. Notes: Barbara's really getting on well with all the staff here. Everybody gave her great feedback on our last review. I get the feeling there's something going on with her and Brad. Call it a hunch. Oh yeah, she. She would not do her job for a long period of time because she would talk with Brad. So, hmm. <laughs> Oh, Hatchy, you're gonna like Barbara. Barbara got another cat recently. She must have at least five now. Daisy, Murphy, Penelope, Freddy, and Lord Winston. I mean, I, mean, I, hope, her, I hope her house is decently sized. Yeah. You don't want to have too many cats in too small of a place. Yeah. <laughs> Bookworm. I'll need to monitor productivity going forward. The cat photos are a big distraction for the rest of the team. <laughs> Alright. Barbara laughed when I told her about the concept for a new horror script. I don't care what she thinks. It's a story about an alien egg at the center of the earth set to hatch on February 30th is a great idea. Why else would anyone avo avoid having a February 30th? But Wait, isn't February 30th not even a thing? Is there only isn't it like on leap year is 29 days and it's the rest of the time is 28? Right. Or am I getting it wrong? Right. Yes. You're asking me to explain to you mm -hmm. how many days are in February. Right. I just wanted to make sure I got it correct and I'm not being an idiot. I think your needing to act demonstrates being an idiot. But yes, you've got it correct. February 30th does not exist. Okay. They're a good contender, but they also don't say anything about, um, you know, medical training. They're really well, close. Yeah, but, well, yeah, but like, everyone's gotten medical training except for these three. Yeah. Yeet. Why, wait, did you just throw it away? Yeah. 
Why did you do that? I can't get in anymore. <laughs> you fucking idiot. We might need to review these. Oh, this actually may be a good person. Oh, and they're even uh, they're on Nancy Drive. Let's check that real quick. Where is Nancy Drive? Because I read ahead a bit. Nancy Drive. Okay, so it's right around here. So they're also close by. The reason why is that they're also a good person. Okay. Job title news reader. Date of birth. July 19th, 1931. Nancy Drive, Oops. phone number 542-0735, sorry. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> kindergarten was hard, fuck you. Notes. John refused to engage with the first aid trainer during the course. I know he was a war medic, but it was station policy to send every, everybody regardless. John apparently has a bunch of medical equipment in, in his home that he procured from the military at the end of his service. Is that legal? Do I need to report him? I spoke to John again about eating the free samples that Brad gets sent for his reviews. He said he'd stopped, but he said that the last three times too. Is it un-American to reprimand a war vet? And where does this guy live? Very Nancy close. Drive, where... Very close yeah, by. The Nancy Drive? Drive is literally right on this road here. Oh, and well, that's it. That's a bit away from where we're needing them to be from. Yeah, and the reason why I'm saying they're, they're a good person because they actually have medical equipment and expertise. Yeah. Like they're a, 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 vet, a veteran medical. A vet medical. So far, it looks like John might be the best bet. Even though they're far. Yeah. A bit far. All right. Yeah. Name Bradley Carter, child title food critic, date of birth January 14th, 1962, address 31 Axe Down Lane. Let's see what that is. Washington would like be the farthest away. Let's see. Oh, Axe Down Lane is just more closer. <laughs> more just, closer. It's just literally below Nancy Drive. Yes. Yes, yes, no. Okay. Uh, phone number 542-4298. When I hired Brad as our station's food critic, people said I was crazy. We only have three takeout places and a diner. What's the point? To them I say, you can't be afraid to explore the darkest reaches of the unknown or Henderson. <laughs> Bradley and Barbara seem to be spending an awful lot of time together. I don't realize she was so interested in Brad's work. Maybe I should join one of their after work meeting sometimes. I've always wanted to learn more about food. Brad and Barbara ended up missing most of the first A training session. Brad made a joke about practicing mouth to mouth with Barbara and got really upset. And Barbara got really upset and stormed off. The joke wasn't that bad. Okay, so this is telling me Brad and Barbara don't know a lot about medical information right now. Yeah. So John is our best bet. Probably. It's just that he's a bit farther away than the other two. Man. But he is our best bet because he has medical training. He has medical equipment. So it's 5420735. And the other two were just fucking around for most of it. So, I think I know which one to go for. God, it's so stupid that this is the fastest you can walk. I know. <laughs> Why well, she looks like she's wearing a literal mask? You know, this mask like cover up the entire. You know, the mask covers up the entire face. Yeah, it doesn't look like that to me. No. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so I think. Wait a minute. What? Wait a second. Go back and look at her again. Why? 
I. She doesn't in any way look like she's wearing a mask. She's a black woman on the other side of tinted glass, bright. God damn it, Hat. <laughs> what do you mean, god damn it? <laughs> I don't need any more <laughs> shit like this of me being cancelled. Well, it's not my fault you're so cancelable. <laughs> okay, so I think I actually have to call her from the damn intercom. Right, being accidentally hey, racist. Hey, there. Yeah. yeah, I'm here. Shut up, find what we need? I think I know who to call. I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. All right, good work. Who should I? Hello? Is anybody there? Please pick up. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to get him to oh. rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What do I do? Did he have booze earlier? He's going into the shock. Peggy, what did the nurse say? It's probably he's this going right into here. shock. Yeah, yeah, he's losing too much blood. But just in case. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the bleeding seems to slow down. Did I mess up? Jason, I'm sorry. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I. I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate Jason's wounds, elevate Jason's legs. Legs. Why would you elevate the wound? <laughs> okay, so listen. <laughs> what you need to do, lift his back up so his stomach, his stomach wound is above his head. Yeah. Just turn him upside down. <laughs> elevate his legs. Yeah. Make sure he's Casey, comfortable. I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Jason, stay with me. I'm just gonna move you. This might hurt. Okay. I propped his legs up on some boxes. I'm looking at my notes. We need to get Jason as warm and comfortable as possible. Do you have anything you could use nearby, Casey? Yeah. Be fine. Be strong for Jason. It's not looking good. <laughs> All right. I'm going to be totally honest with you. My radio host's instincts are telling me that this guy's going to fucking die. Oh, my God. He's going to be Jason fine. Jason is going to be fine. Just make sure he knows he's going to be okay. Okay? Okay. Right, Brian, my Brian, manner we need to sucks hurry. with the third Jason doesn't option. sound like he's doing yeah. too well. You said you knew who to call earlier? Who was it? John Hedges. He's... He's probably safe here better. Because we did everything else right. Or he would have fucking died. <laughs> Alright, so John Hedges most likely. Because yeah. these two bitches didn't finish their damn medical training. And he's a trained well, we medical don't know war veteran. That. Well, we don't know that they didn't finish it. They just don't have anything specifically about medicine in there. I'm gonna go with my gut. We need to call John Hedges. Well, yeah, he lives on like John. Drive. He didn't yeah. really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five four two zero seven three five. Calling now. Let's hope he picks. Uh, who the hell is this calling me? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest, if this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. 
This is a medical emergency. John, no, yeah. this is a medical emergency. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or never mind. He, he's badly hurt, and he's going to die unless we get someone to him now. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is going to die if we don't help him right now. Seriously, I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. You say he was stabbed? Do you know the extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? Bad. Jason seemed really weak and then just started crashing. How is he now? We probably should have initially secured that knife. Why have you been saving all onto the same save slot? Oh, I don't know. What uh, about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out! Please tell me you found someone to help! Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming! You're gonna be just fine! Just hold on for me, okay? Damn Discord. Just Oh. Casey, I'm gonna need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this from here. Okay. Forrest, we'll call you back later. I have to go now. Good luck, everyone. Yeah, John got there John, fucking fast. It's gonna be all right. <sighs> and with yeah. that, the show moves on. We're sending our best wishes well, actually, to Jason. Well, actually, we probably did the right choice, Hatch, because whenever you make a bad choice, it leads to a well, character's after death. All that excitement. Mm -hmm. I think we could use some music. That's so we did do the correct choice. Oh. Come back upstairs when you're ready. <laughs> now I can leave. <laughs> <laughs> Game's like, no, you have to wait for Peggy to speak. <laughs> so yeah, we did do the correct choice. We. So my gut was right. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't really gut. It was just kind of the most obvious choice. Yeah. Are you never gonna change the song? Late. No. <laughs> this might be your last break for the night, so try to enjoy it. Give me a buzz when you want to go back on air. I want to see if this counts. Does that count? No. <laughs> oh, you have like a tracker of how many baskets you make? Yeah. <laughs> I was from Oh my desk. god, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's roll. You got it. We've got another call coming through too. Here okay, Forrest, know. shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I believe we have another call. Sound on the Blaster line. Master play a sound on the soundboard during a call. Flores, it's me, Roller Ricky. Oh, oh I am Max uh, here too. Oh wait, right, this is the good guy. Yeah, not the pizza guy. What's on your? Uh, we got good to hear from you. What's on your mind? Are you okay? And uh, say what's on your mind. Yeah. Hello to you both. What's on your mind, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Really, info from the attack. I'm waiting. Really? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, this one? I was thinking really, but yeah. Okay. Oh, Either one's probably that? good. See, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallows High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? 
Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team too. Oh. Oh, jeez. Okay, keep talking. Yeah, keep talking. Keep talking. What happened? We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky, were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I'd be beat out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. Oh. I can see it, you know? Mm. Oh. What was her name? Yeah, what was her name? Ricky, please. What was her name? I never got her name, man. He just called her Bean. I, I didn't really know her before or, or see her after that. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were just having a good time. And then the next thing I knew, everyone was running for their life. I looked up and saw the goddamn whistling man in the trees. And, and I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. And... Wait, wait. Now it makes more sense than is the fucking mayor... A guy who wants to be the mayor, because I remember specifically earlier on, he's. It said that in high school, he was a big sports person. Oh yeah. And then they've got this whistling night, uh, hazing ritual. So, he probably got the guy killed. It probably yeah. Told and, and try to cover everything up because he owns most majority of the properties. Yeah. Then I'd say, uh, well, say to Ricky, it's it's not your fault. Yeah. He's got some survivor's guilt going on. Yeah. Ricky, it wasn't your fault. You're not a bad person. I know that now, man. It took a long time to learn, but yeah. Just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, man. Wait. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Max to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening, man. I'll let you to it. Oh! So that Not means... That means all right, folks. the fucking mayor the candidate's probably going to get to be a target. If anyone has any and I'm not sure if I want to keep, keep him alive. Because he's a... <laughs> Please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in, but hang on. What's up, Peggy? Peggy? Uh-oh. You're gonna wanna take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. You're the worst uh, disc jockey ever. Just good, nothing but the same song. <laughs> Find out for yourself on line one. I'm okay. Hello? Forrest, I'm glad I got back through to you. Sounds like it's been a busy It's the 911 operator. Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy to have you too. I... Wait, Sarah? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. <laughs> anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago. We've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through until now. It's been a long night, so help is on the way. Mm. Say the bottom one, yeah. 
It's been non-stop since you left. Please tell us you're bringing help. You bet. I'm leading a whole goddamn squad towards Gallows Creek as we speak. Turns out somebody had cut the phone line. They had no idea what was happening. That's great news. That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he... How she... How the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Oh. Listen, we're coming in hot. But we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the Whistling Man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. Oh. Hmm. Yes, what do you need? Yeah, which means this is probably why this thing is right here. Yeah. You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot. But here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And uh. while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in, so once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. Do my best. I'll do my best. Yeah. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Forrest Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. hope you're right i don't think it's gonna be that easy let's get back on air i'd say i hope you're right yeah. i hope you're right the sooner this is over the better i am right trust me anyway we yeah, can and then your back boss on is gonna yell Take at you for throwing his floppies all over the place <laughs> especially ready, two behind the, the cabinet <laughs> bringing you back live now welcome back to the scream with me forrest nash the line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say <gasps> things are looking up. It's all okay. I'm gonna pause real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, at first, I gotta pee, but secondly, something I gotta announce the new Chilla's art game, The Kidnapped, is coming out October 31st. Wait. Well, anyway, you gotta go to the bathroom. Yeah, so you entertain the stream. <laughs> well, I was probably gonna get up anyway, so. Ah. <laughs> entertain the boss. Yeah, enter entertain all these bots and yourself. Hopefully they leave at some point. Yeah. Alright. Be right back.
Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby! Don't you put that on us! I'm back. Almost over, but for now, let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John, is, is he going to be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. I've got him stabilized and resting him. Horace Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? Oh, Jason lives. We saved Jason Voorhees. You want okay? It is. I hope you're feeling better now. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well. Got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. I'm guessing the whistling man is still out there. Why do you ask? Yes, the Whistling Man's still out there. Why do you ask? You know something about the Whistling Man, don't you? Yeah. I do. Can we talk about what happened earlier? Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but this call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on like he'd never existed. What happened? What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. We decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. At the party that night, I left the group for a second. Met our whistling man tended to get stabbed in front of everyone. Started an almighty panic with those screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead. But when I heard her scream... Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? 
Rogers did call her that. Yeah. He called her B. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was M What? What happened? Are we still on air? No. No, we're not. As soon as I get the power, it's completely gone. How do we get it back on? I don't, um, oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Reggie picked it up a while ago, in case we ever needed to do an emergency broadcast. An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attacks, broadcasting a serial killer's location to the cops so we can end this nightmare? Fair point. It's in the storage area, in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. Well, see you when you're back. Well, bookworm, I'm gonna get murdered. So, bookworm, do me a favor. If I die, delete my internet history. <sighs> Far back corner. Why is this station so big? Just one problem. <laughs> Why do it with access to your computer directly? <laughs> Don't worry, Bookworm, you'll find a way. That <coughs> must be it. Boom! Oh, we've got power. You're right, store power to the station after the blackout. The whistling there. I need to warn Peggy. Intercom. Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy! I need to get back upstairs. You better keep your promise, bookworm. What the hell? Oh, shit. Oh, no. Peggy, where'd you go? Oh, that's great. What the? No way. This can't be happening. A call. Uh, where's Peggy? Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. We've got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. What do, you mean? what do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well... Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth. And... You crazy bitch! Ha! <laughs> I was right. Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. Daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But he made you crawl out of his coffin with all the money in the world. 
Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well, he knows he'll get it. Then who's here? Wait, then who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallus Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Oh. Oh, she was pregnant. Oh. Your son? You mean you... Wait, did he... Did he... Of course, that explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. And that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper office. I don't think I've forgotten about that, Forrest. Locking my sweet boy away like an animal. And Murphy, he, he was right, wasn't he? He did fight a man. He did. I taught my boy to never run away from a fight. Hang on. Did you say Barrel? Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. There we go. Marie? Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Oh. Well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Uh, where's this Where going? going with all of this? Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You... Ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. I'll do it. Okay, Marie. I'll do it. Good. Then let's talk about the night George was murdered. Murdered? Uh, listen, I... I said you speak when you're spoken to. <sighs> yes, Mom, well, I mean, now, what? <laughs> Bookworm. <laughs> I good work tonight, piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you... Can do that. All right, I can do that. Thank you. I want you to help me and Teddy tell the story, Forrest. Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is. Then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just, uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. <laughs> Hit him, Mary. <laughs> Be honest, Teddy. Do you want to die? If we keep hitting him, he's going to die. So just be Teddy, honest. be honest with me, or we're both going to die. Honest? Forrest, I'm trapped here with a psycho. <coughs> what the hell? God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. The Whistling Night, right? I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as Whistling Night. I'm guessing that's what you mean? Well, we didn't have a name for it then. It was just a night that Mooney 
went missing. But Whistling Night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God. Who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky. He was there too, wasn't he? Yes, there too. Runner Ricky, our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know, because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life, so I helped him keep himself together. Mm. You were afraid he would talk about that night, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. He looked up at the trees and saw Jason there, bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man <laughs> screaming. George and I and Ricky got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. No, Ricky didn't know. Did you ask Ricky? And so he deserves to die. Remember correctly, I don't did he know Bookworm? Okay, buddy, please tell me it isn't so. I don't remember the truth. Uh, uh, fuck it. No, Marie, you're wrong. Ricky didn't know. What? Did you miss that part of the broadcast? I spoke to him earlier. He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... <sighs> it doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. Just a prank? Go to hell? Hit him, Mary. <laughs> How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on! I... Oh, God damn it! Dead. And so tonight you stab him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. Well, shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. Separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point. And when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. I scream. And he starts laughing. I tell you, it's, it's just a joke. Uh, I could stall for time here. Who was it? We already know who it is, probably. Probably Teddy. What happened next? Let's see it there. Tell me, what happened next? I suddenly recognized it was Chuck. Oh, it was Chuck. Next. Nothing. I mean, it was.
was just Teddy. George fell off whistling point. How do you know? How do you know what happened? I saw it. What is wrong with you, Teddy? Bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. Then why cover it? Then why the cover up? If she's lying, why the cover up? My future was at stake, Ash. You know what it's like. People like us. Yeah, right, Teddy. That night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip ruin my future? George was a blip? He wasn't a blip. He wasn't a blip. Search for George's body all night, but Sandra found him the next morning while out jazz running. She found him in the river, but she lied about that to protect Teddy. She said something about her rent going up, unless she. Teddy, did your father own Sandra Sharp's dance studio? It's Gallows Creek, not Sharp. Answer the question. I'd answer the question if I were you, Teddy. Yes. Okay. We own the most of the town. That's it then. Your father was going to run her out of business unless she lied and said she found him in the reservoir instead of the river. What my father did in his business dealings is nothing to do with me. The false reports. That's why you killed Sheriff Matthews too. Isn't it, Maria? Not just to get him out of the way, but... Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... I saw. And... I'm sorry. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even, even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper. But no, that coward killed the story. <sighs> I'll take care of Maurice Russell later. I return. Yeah, um, Hatchet, as you can tell, um, the reason why. The Whistling Man's been going uh, two places. It's because she was pregnant on the on the day where where George got murdered. Uh, got somewhat murdered. We find out that um, Teddy, the fucking mayor wannabe, scared scared him off of the po uh, top of Whistling Point, and he fell to his death. Yeah. And we're just trying to stall at the moment. Right now we're we're facing the sun. And we're wow. and Teddy is getting his ass beat as well. As the truth is being revealed on live. Alright. So we have to stall. You've been through hell, this has to stop. When will the killing end? 
Probably say this. I'm trying to keep her there. Yeah. We've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. Oh, shit. The school gym, the football field, the roller rink. Fuck. I would imagine it's the football field. Yeah, but if we choose wrong. We... If we choose wrong, you just say. <laughs> True, but uh, also if if we choose wrong, we're also going to die. <laughs> Rip. Football field. You're at the football field. Jesus Christ, Forrest, you idiot! We're in the gym at Gallows Creek High. I told you not to do that. Wait. Okay, why well, let's hear let's hear him die. He's dead too now, isn't he? He is. Anyway, I think. Yes, anyway, so. Right. Do we... Actually, let's see us die. That about it. wraps up the interview with Teddy. So. Marie? Where? Oh my god. Peggy! Teddy! Oh. Okay, let's actually go back now. Oh my god, it's Peggy's sister. Mm -hmm. She said that she and her sister parted ways after after a certain event. Did, was the words in backwards for a moment? Anyways, I was worried yeah. about Peggy's sister's book. <laughs> In the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. Not that it matters, but yes, we're here. Anyway, I think take a swing for Teddy Gallows. Teddy. So, Marie, where? Hi, hey, Adorna. Hi, Adorna. Peggy. Teddy. You gotta help me. I. Oh. Sister? Sister? Peggy, what, what's happening? Why are you even there? want to explain, Peggy. Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out. That my sister is the whistling man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This has to be a lot for you. I just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night. But did they care? No. They told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned I'd been with George. And... And... Uh, Marie, I'm so sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really? 
I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well, I'll have to settle for the next best thing. Oh shit. Oh god. Uh, we got if we choose wrong. So save here. Yeah. We choose wrong. Penny's gonna die. This is obviously a bad one. What'd you say, Adorna? Let's see what happens. Start with the last one. Last one? Is that why you attacked Eugene? Yeah. Okay. So Wait. Is oh. that why you went after that kid in the maze maze? Eugene Stein? Because his parents? That's right. Eugene's parents were there that night too. But they got themselves killed in a bus accident. And since only their child was left. Murray, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She, she kept it here on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, Em. I... Well, I... Peggy. She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. I'll be okay. God, Marie. Hey, Zara. I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now. We got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. Fuck yeah. True book. Well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This is Ben, Forrest Nash. Uh, it's been a scream. Do it's been a scream. It's been a scream. And it's been a scream. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yep, you got it. You gotta end every single run you do of this thing. Like that. I saved everyone. Nice. Now you just gotta do a run where you get everyone killed. Oh, yeah. that's where the credits are. These are all the people, but I'm pretty sure some of them died. Oh, that's what I looked like. Open the door, skip epilogue and credits. Wait. Oh, am I the whistling man now? It says if I go here, open the door, skip the epilogue and credits. Trying to see if I can see the face of the. Okay. Mm -hmm. There was a janitor guy that was. This guy was talked about. Clyde. Uh, they're not here. Oh, what a clear wide, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I like those fucking credits. Oh, it's a killer 
Okay, I cannot hear it, Darna. What was that? I was saying there's probably a good amount of people who worked on it, so... Oh. Oh, apparently the suspect went on top of Whistling Point. Right where George died. Uh-oh. They're gonna jump off and kill themselves. He's gonna go the way that George did. So that's probably me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't open these. She's gonna jump. Yep. True, but true. Officer Wilco, do you have a visual? Negative. No sign of the suspect anywhere. Did she actually escape or some shit? Probably. Hey. I mean, it depends on how uh, high the fall is. And how you fall. Yeah. So you can land on your head, you're fucking dead. <laughs> Yeah. And plus, I mean, if you fall in the river, then your body could be carried down even if you do die. Yeah. And that's it. Maybe. You know what? I might as well just. It darn came at the worst time because I I'm pretty much just gonna end it here because it's almost midnight. Yeah. So, yeah. That was actually a really good game. <laughs>
Oh, you do know it? Uh, well, I said he as in, like... Like... What is it? I've never heard of it. It is... <laughs> fucking amazing. <laughs> it's basically where this person tries... I it tells his pug to go th do this party, and it... On the radio. Pug also party, and this dog just freaks the fuck her. out. And someone added titles, but subtitles to it. That it was to what the dog sounds like it's saying. And it's just hilarious as all hell. Aww. I'll send it to you. Um. It, it's funny as shit. And why did you choose Claptrap again, Bookworm? So why wouldn't Bookworm use Claptrap? Because it's, it's fun to torture Bright. It's also easy to torture Bright. Shut up. Uh, don't let last words go. Um. That's why. Are you still gonna. Are you, are you getting bodies again? Yeah, still. Yeah. But, okay. like, he's not so follower or anything, saying... he's mainly just viewer. So. Okay. Well, oh, so not. Oh, to, to not, to not get, so I don't jinx you, I'm going to say, right, is a cat bird, okay, and I'm nice. done. Alright, hatchet last words go. And remember, kid, if you smell the outside of the lies inside your eyes, then that's probably because... You're dead. You're just dead. Anyway, go check out my stream at www.twitch.tv slash hatchethead33 here in like five minutes. That's right, Bright. I'm gonna turn all of my ending segments to promotion for me now. <laughs> we'll see. Wow. Now the real question is, should I wait five minutes to write? <laughs> I mean, I could, I could get ready and set up. Yeah, you can. If you want me to so. Then yeah, I guess I'll go do that. I'll leave the Discord call then. All right. Mm. Alright, then see y'all over there, and have a good night, Bright. Yeah, you too. Alright, wrong one. That's your score. I actually probably should have built. Yeah, do your first raid into Hatchet, yeah. And, uh,. But while we're waiting, uh, why don't you check out that Pug Party video? It is one of my favorite fucking memes. Oh my god, the thumbnail! <laughs> Pokemon saw it. <laughs> that was weird, but kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. It's one of my favorite memes. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to randomly send it to Cheery.
Like, for no reason, just send it to Jiri. There's nothing wrong sending random shit to Jiri, right? I mean, he is a snake daddy. <laughs> I'm surprised he's fine with me calling him that. Like, why? Well, That is an NSFW joke, and Jerry's just fine with it. Probably didn't take it as NSFW. <laughs> yeah, because he doesn't have to be in a sexual sense. <laughs> Alright. Mm -hmm. Bookhorn, what's the raid words? Oh, god damn it! I forgot about my fucking... <laughs> sound the, the SCP sound stuff. Not coming up with much. Do you want to pass it to Aderna? We could do bright as a cat turn. No. Anyway, mm -hmm. Aderna, what's what words? Um. Bright raid. Bright raid, just bright raid. Alright, we'll do that. Just bright word raid, raid and a bunch of bright raid emojis. Oh, some of nine. All right, everyone ready? Anybody ready for the raid? All right, three, two, one.